a treaty, a trial, and a treat made from thin air are today's topics on CNN 10. So glad you could join us this Wednesday. My name is Carl Azus. With the impeachment trial of U.S. President Donald Trump going on right now in the Senate, we're taking a look at the role of the person who's presiding over that trial, Chief Justice John Roberts. His official title is Chief Justice of the United States. He's the highest ranking judge in America. And though his main job is leading the Supreme Court, he's got a new responsibility in the Senate's impeachment trial of presiding over that as well. It's required by the U.S. Constitution. In fact, the only time the phrase Chief Justice appears in America's governing document is when it describes his role in the Senate's impeachment trials of presidents. Chief Justice Roberts' power in that trial is limited. Any rulings he makes could be voted down and overridden by senators. And while it's unknown exactly how much of a role he'll play in the trial, something he said during his confirmation hearing in 2005 could give us a clue. He compared judges to umpires, saying they don't make the rules, they apply them. I will remember that it's my job to call balls and strikes and not to pitch or bat. Yesterday, he walked across the street from the U.S. Supreme Court to the U.S. Senate to take on his new and somewhat different responsibility. In this class photo of the men and women in black, one justice sits smiling front and center. But Chief Justice John Roberts will soon leave his natural habitat at the sedate Supreme Court and move to the political minefield of the Senate as he presides over the trial of the president. When he's over at the Supreme Court overseeing that body, he's actually a judge. He is, he's casting votes, he's deciding cases. When he is at the Senate, he's not casting a vote for or against Donald Trump. He's presiding over a trial. The Constitution itself is vague on his job description, saying only this, the Chief Justice shall preside. And I'm now ready to take the oath. His one-time mentor, Chief Justice William Rehnquist, took a hands-off approach to the job when he sat on the dais throughout Bill Clinton's impeachment. The Senate will convene as a court of impeachment. Two decades later, Mitch McConnell makes it clear he'd like Roberts to stick to the same script. I would anticipate the Chief Justice would not actually make any rulings. He would simply submit uh, motions uh, to the body and we would vote. That's probably just fine with Roberts. John Roberts is naturally reserved. John Roberts is very much concerned about appearances and the judiciary looking impartial. I cannot imagine John Roberts having any incentive to intervene in the business of the Senate in a way that would look like he was actually controlling the fate of Donald Trump. 10 second trivia. Which of these ships sank in April of 1912? RMS Titanic, SS Eastland, RMS Lusitania, or Endurance? All of these ships sank in 1915, except the Titanic, which was lost on April 15, 1912. A British government minister says the wreck of the Titanic is the most documented maritime tragedy in history. On the night of April 14th, when the so-called unsinkable ship hit the iceberg that caused it to sink, Titanic was on its maiden voyage from the United Kingdom to the United States. Now, those two countries have ratified a treaty that's intended to protect the ship's remains. The law gives Britain and America the power to grant or deny licenses for explorers to send submersibles inside the wreckage and to remove any artifacts they find outside of it. British officials say this will ensure that the Titanic is treated with the sensitivity and respect it deserves, but that wreck as it sits now won't stay that way forever. Images from a recent dive there show the ship is sinking deeper into the ocean floor and being corroded by bacteria there. Uh, first impressions, it's big. It is a big wreck. I wasn't fully ready for just how large it was. The future of the wreck 
um, is going to continue to deteriorate over time. Uh, it's a natural process. Uh, the, these are natural types of bacteria. The type of protein powder being produced by a company in Finland is making headlines. It's said to save space, save the environment, and potentially feed masses of people. But there are a number of concerns about it. For one thing, it's grown in a laboratory. It takes heavy machinery to produce it, and building those machines with concrete and steel can have a negative environmental impact. The protein powder hasn't been approved yet for human consumption, and critics say it can't produce enough food to feed enough people at a good enough price. But that's not stopping solar foods from moving forward. It's not often that scientists gather around multi-million dollar machinery to eat pancakes. But today is that day. We're doing that uh, just for fun every now and then. The team, however, isn't just in it for the fun. They say they're making an entirely new ingredient out of thin air using this. And it could revolutionize how food is made. Whether it's the crops that grow from it, or the cattle that live on it, the ground is crucial in creating what we eat. But agriculture is one of the world's largest sources of greenhouse gases. That's why, in Helsinki, a company is trying to remove land from the equation. Passi Vanika is the CEO of Solar Foods, a startup that says it's developing a new natural source of protein called Solene. Like other protein supplements, it has no discernible taste and can be added to almost any snack or meal. But unlike competitors, Vanika says Solene's production process has almost no carbon footprint. We don't use plants and animals. So we are bringing a new kind of harvest that is produced through fermentation. The process starts here, with a direct air capture system that's designed to harness carbon dioxide. Regular air is pulled from this vent into one of eight drums, which are then heated to release water and CO2. Simultaneously, this electrolyzer produces hydrogen by using electricity to split water. But Solar Food says this is where the magic happens. This is the main step, basically a standard fermentation tank. Here, gases are mixed with microbes, along with a few other elements, continuously. So it's a bit like a treadmill. Basically, the cells need to be running, but they are not actually getting anywhere. Even though this 200-liter tank looks complicated, most of these valves and pipes are just there to measure and monitor the machine. Quite a lot of complexity comes to the structure because of the steam sterilization. So we have to be sure that uh, what we are growing is just the organism that we want to grow. This drum dryer is the last piece of the puzzle. Liquid gets heated to about 140 degrees Celsius, leaving just this powder behind. When we disconnect the food production from agriculture, which means land use and, and the climate and weather, it means that we can go to produce food everywhere. We can go to the desert or to the Arctic or even to space. Solar Foods is currently working with the European Space Agency on a way for astronauts to use Solene while in orbit. But before leaving this planet, the team plans on making 50 million meals by 2021. But until then, you might just occasionally find them perfecting their pancakes. At least we like them. And uh, let's see uh, if, uh, if uh, the first product on the shelf would be pancake. Last weekend, Newfoundland, Canada got more snowfall than at any other time in its recorded history. It was over people's heads in some places. That's why Lola Parsons was confused at first about why her car wasn't buried. Then she looked inside it. Parsons had left a window open and the snow blew into her car instead of around it. There was so much she couldn't fit inside. The good-natured Canadian just laughed it off. And while we don't know the car brand, we're guessing it was a Ford Fiesta, a Chill Lincoln, a Lotus Elise, a Get Out of Dodge, a Mick Frozen P1, a Nissan Maximize, an Oldsmobile Aurora Borealis, a Toyota Prius, a Bugatti Gelato, a Porsche Ice Boxster, a Yugo Somewhere Warmer, anything by Polaris or an Alpine. All right, today's show started in Washington, D.C. We're ending in Washington State with a royal recognition of Linwood High School. Thank you guys for watching from Linwood and for commenting on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash CNN10. I'm Carl Azus.